Hello and welcome to this Design Cuts video tutorial. Today we're looking at applying textures to illustrations in Illustrator. As usual, I'm using some Design Cuts assets. The illustrations themselves are coming from the 550 hand-drawn illustrations pack. I'm using a texture from the Grunge Textures Vector Pack. And we'll use a pattern as a texture and it's coming from the Pattern Punch Vector Patterns Pack. And finally, we'll also use a texture from 80 hand-drawn seamless textures sketch collection. So swinging back to Illustrator, I have one of the illustrations open here, and this is a grape illustration. Let's have a look in the layers palette at, to what we have here. Well, we have a group with all of the elements in the group, but I don't want to texture these two elements, so I'm going to drag them out of the group. That's the stem and the leaves of the grape. I'm going to move the group of grapes to the very top of this layer and let's go and source our texture. The texture itself is one of the grunge textures and here is the grunge textures number two. These textures are delivered as an Illustrator file so there's no need to actually install them. You just want to grab the texture that you want. So if you hover over these textures you can see that they're in groups so they're very easy to select. This is the one I'll be using, so I'll click on it to select it and copy it using Edit Copy or some other method like Control or Command C. Let's swing back to our grapes and I'll paste it in using Edit and then Paste or Control or Command V. I'll resize it by holding Shift and Alt on a PC, that's Shift Option on a Mac. I need this to be large enough to fit over the grapes. So let's return to the layers palette and we need a second copy of the grapes because we're going to sacrifice that using a clipping mask. So I'll drag and drop the grapes onto the new icon and then move them above the compound path that is our texture. Now we need to make this a compound path as well. So I'll select the top version of the grapes and choose object compound path make and that turns the grapes into a compound path so that they can be used as a clipping mask. They'll be sacrificed in the process so we won't see this grapes image again. I'll select both the grapes at the very top, the one we just made a compound path out of, and our texture layer. And with both of these selected, I'll choose Object Clipping Mask Make. If I turn the second copy of the grapes off for a minute, you'll be able to see what we've just achieved. What we've done is to clip the texture layer to the shape of the grapes. So I'm going to turn the second copy of the grapes on again. And if we wish to, we could recolor those grapes. So let's make them a sort of green color. And then we could recolor the texture by selecting the clipping group that has the texture in it. I'll open up the clipping group and let's go and locate the compound path. And here is its color. Well, if I double click on that, I can change the color of the texture and I'm going to make it a sort of dark olive green. So that's one way of applying a texture to a shape in Illustrator. It does mean that your texture and your shape are separate objects so you want to make sure that they travel together. If there's any concern about that, select both of these and simply group them with object and then group. That way they'll travel together. For the second method of applying textures to an illustration in Illustrator, I'm going to texture this lemon slice and I'm going to texture the whole of it and I'm going to do it by poking holes in the actual illustration so we would be able to see the background behind it. So to start off with, I'll go and source the texture I'll be using. So I'm thinking this will be a really good texture so I'll select it and copy it. And I'll go and place it over the top of my lemon slice and size it to suit. I'm going to arrange the lemon slice and the texture in such a way as the texture is going to look good over the lemon slice and I can get a preview as to what it's going to look like by just looking at where the texture is and we're going to remove these areas from the lemon slice. For this particular process, it will be helpful if your texture and your illustration are different colors. Mine are, but if you were not in this situation, you could select the lemon slice and just change its color because you're going to need to make a selection by color in a minute and it's going to help to have your texture a different color to your lemon slice. 
I'll select over both of these objects, the texture and the lemon slice. If we check in the layers palette, we will see that the texture itself is a compound path and the lemon slice is a group. That's just fine, they'll work perfectly this way. I'm going to the Pathfinder palette, which you can get to by choosing Window and then Pathfinder, and then we'll use the option Merge. So I'll click it once. You may not see a significant change to the design at this point, but rest assured that the holes have been punched out of the lemon slice. I'll go to the Group Selection tool at this point and click Outside Everything, and then just click on a piece of the texture. I want to select all the texture elements, so I'll choose Select, and then Same, and Fill Color, and that selects all these colored texture elements. Once they're selected, I'll simply press Delete and you can see that we've got holes punched through our lemon shape. I'm going to add a rectangle that is the size of the artboard so that we can see that we can see through the lemon slice. I'll use a different color. I'll move this colored rectangle below the artwork by selecting Object Arrange and Send to Back. You can see clearly now that we're able to see through the lemon slice where the texture is. Now, if we want to change the color of the lemon slice, we're going to need to be a little careful. I'll open up the group that is the lemon slice, and while everything looks okay at the top of the group, you'll see that further down, we have a whole heap of no fill, no stroke shapes. We'll need to delete these before we can recolor our lemon slice. So I'll select one of them, and doing it through the layers palette is the easiest way to do it. Choose Select and then Same and Fill Color, and that's selecting all of these no fill, no stroke shapes. Simply press Delete. Now the only things that are left in this group are actually filled shapes. Now you can select the group and apply a different color to it. So there's our lemon slice complete with textured holes, which is allowing us to see through the lemon slice to the background below. In this final example, we'll look at a couple of ways to use patterns as textures. Now, both of these pattern files are delivered in a different way, so it's important to understand the differences. We'll look first at the Pattern Punch pattern. So I'm opening this pattern file. Now when you get this pattern file and you have a look in the swatches, you'll see that the patterns are all delivered as swatches. For you to be able to use these yourself in future, you can save them. So you'll go to the Flyout menu in this particular document and choose Save Swatch Library as AI. You have to save it as an AI file because this alternate method, ASE, will not save patterns. It only saves colors. So you have to save it as an AI file. When you click to save it as an AI file, you'll be taken automatically to where your swatches need to be stored. I'm just going to continue to call them Pattern Punch Patterns, so I'll just click Save. Looks like I've already done this before, so let's just click Yes and overwrite those patterns. This means that in future we can use those pattern punch patterns at any time. Let me just close that file. When you need to use those patterns, you'll go to the Library button here in the Swatches panel and choose User Defined, and then you'll find your pattern punch patterns are in this list, or whatever you called that file will be in this list. If you click it, you can get access to these patterns. If you need to see them a little bit larger, I would suggest that you choose something like Large Thumbnail or Large List View. We're going to use one of these patterns to texture our pair here. But first, let's have a look and see what we've got inside this pair image, because it's been delivered as a group of objects. So I'm going to break the pair itself out of that group so that I can just focus on the body of the pair. I'm going to apply my pattern to this shape, so I can select any of the patterns here that were delivered in that file. So let me just go and choose one to use. I think this will be a good pattern. As soon as I click it to select it, if it's the one I want to use, I can just close this dialog, and you'll see that the pattern swatch itself has been added to my swatches palette. You can also resize these patterns by choosing Object and then Transform and Scale. You'll want to deselect Transform Objects because you don't want to change the pair itself. You just want to make the pattern larger or smaller. I'm going to make mine larger, so I'll make it 125%. 
or even a bit larger still and click OK. So I now have my pear shape filled with a pattern. If I want to recolor the pattern, that's a very easy way to do this. You'll simply select the object that's filled with the pattern and go to the recolor artwork tool by clicking once here. The easiest way to recolor at this point is go to edit and then simply drag this slider around to choose the color that you want to use for your pattern. When you've got the color you want, just click OK. You'll notice that your pattern swatch reappears in a recolored version, as well as, of course, the image itself being recolored appropriately. Not all patterns are delivered the same way as that previous pattern set. So let's have a look at the 80 hand-drawn seamless textures that are delivered in a different way. In this case, you'll just get a look at what the patterns look like in use, but they're not actually created as pattern swatches at this point. So what I'm going to do is just choose a pattern to use. So I'm liking this swirly one here, so I'll just select it and I'll copy it with Edit Copy. I'll go to my pair image and I'll paste it in with Edit Paste. Now I want to create this as a pattern and it is a seamless repeating pattern, but I need to make it myself. So as soon as I paste it into the document, I'll drag and drop it into the swatches palette. That creates it as a pattern swatch. So I don't need this copy of it any longer. I'll press delete. So this is now a pattern swatch that I can use. So I'll select a different object. I'm going to this time apply the pattern to the leaf. So I'll select the leaf and I'll click on the pattern to apply it to the leaf. And again, I want to shrink it this time. So I'll choose Object Transform Scale. Again, I'll disable Transform Objects and I'll drop the uniform value down quite low so that there's quite a bit of texture inside the leaf of this pair. Now this time I want to add a color as well to the leaf. So I'm going to select the leaf and I'll choose the appearance panel, which you can get to of course by choosing window and then appearance. This is the fill here. So this is the texture pattern fill. I want to add a color as well. So I'll click here on add new fill. The fill is duplicated here. So I've got a second version of the fill. I'm going to select the one at the bottom because that will be underneath the existing pattern and I'll fill it with a color by clicking the drop down list here and just choosing a color to use. So I'll use a sort of green color. So here I have a pattern fill on top of a color. And the nice thing about this method is that the pattern and the color are all embedded in the same object. So if you move the leaf, everything's going to move. You could also use a gradient. So instead of this flat color, I'm going to apply a gradient to my leaf. So I'll click here on gradient. I'll double click here to change the colors in my gradient. So I'm going to make it vary from a sort of yellow to a green. And I can pick the point where the transition takes place by just adjusting this slider here. And we could of course make it a radial gradient if we wish to do so. At this point, let's have a look and see how we would recolor this object. So I'm going to select the entire path so that when I click the recolor artwork dialog, everything is opened and every color is accessible. I want to change the black. So I'm double click here and I'll choose a different color for my black. So I'm going to use a sort of olive green and I'll click OK and then OK again. At the moment, we have an olive green texture on top of our green gradient, but we can blend it should we wish to do so. So with my leaf shape selected, I'm going to work out what I've got where. The top object here is the pattern itself and the bottom object, of course, is our gradient fill. Well, each of these entries, the stroke and each of the fill, have their own opacity and blend modes. So I'm going to target the settings for the pattern itself and click on opacity to get access to not only the opacity, but also a means of blending the pattern in with the gradient below. So I'm going to choose something like overlay, that would be an option, or in this case, perhaps color burn. And that blends the texture into the leaf color underneath to that gradient fill. 
So be aware that you can combine pattern style textures with blend modes as well within shapes in Illustrator. As a reminder, there's another method for applying textures to illustrations in Illustrator and the link to that video is in the description below. I hope that you've enjoyed learning these Illustrator texture techniques. Let us know what you think in the comments below and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley for Design Cuts.